Hi, this is Myra with Camp My My, and I'm here with my friends Scott and Sabina Swanson, and I, I want to show you the amazing camper van build that they have done. But don't add me, cause baby, I'm a hiatus. We decided to do something fun for our 10-year wedding anniversary this year, and we're a single car family right now, so we're looking for a secondary car. I came across a Transit Connect, and I said, instead of buying us a second car to use for our family, why don't we do something fun for our 10-year anniversary this year? So we found this Transit Connect XLT and chose to make it into a camper van to travel down to the Southwest. Scott was the brains behind the build of everything, but I worked with him on the design of it all. And considering how small this van is, I wanted it light and bright and airy. Um, so we chose white and the color we chose was Alabaster from Sherwin-Williams, just a nice creamy warm white that's not super bright, but I just love the color. And in addition with that, I just love the rustic feel still, but I don't want it too rusticy. So we added flares of like leather in it and then just some pops of different geometric designs as well. In regards to the leather, I chose this versus like your standard hardware you have in your kitchen just because you're climbing in and out of the van. You don't want to bump your head, shoulders, knees on anything hard or crazy like that. That's a little inconvenient. As far as the flooring goes too, I still wanted to go something light and actually found a really cool like open box deal at Lowe's so I was thankful for that because most of it's covered up anyways but I really loved this color and it just flowed well with the stain choices that we used for all of our wood pieces. So the backsplash I just wanted something different than just your normal like subway tile and when I was at Menards one day I came across um, some of the vinyl that they had and I saw this geometric pattern and I thought it actually blended really well since we were choosing gray and whites as well. All right so this van is a 2012 Ford Transit Connect XLT um, and had about 135,000 miles on it when we bought it. We found it at a reasonable price from a, from a dealership locally here, and we were really excited to, to turn it into a camper van. One of the first things we did is we had to gut the whole thing. So there was actually a, a previous camper van build in here, but it was very bare bones, very minimal, and just kind of a, a little slide out bed and then a small cabinet unit here. Nothing as for electrical or anything like that. Still had all the, the factory ceiling and factory panels. So the first thing we had to do was to, to gut the thing. So we gutted, we ripped down the ceiling, took all the panels off the wall, cleaned up the floor and took everything out that was already in there. So we were starting from a clean slate. But why don't we start over here with the cabinet unit? Uh, the cabinet, we, we have this surface here, which ended up being really helpful for when we're in bed or we're cooking or doing whatever. You always need, especially in a small space, a place to set things, right? Your little, your drinks and uh, little things that you're using, plates for when you're, when you're cooking. Uh, it's just a super useful, super functional uh, surface in uh, where that is. So on the back here, if we open up the back door here on this cabinet unit, we have our, our water storage here. So uh, easily could have added a sink up here uh, and had water storage down here, but we, we came up with a, a creative idea for what we wanted to do with our water here. I uh, just got to get that back door open. Uh, first of all, a must is a, a broom and a dustpan for dusting out all the, the little crumbs and stuff that go in there. <clears throat> but here we have this lip, like or the bumper on here. So we needed a, a way to get over that. So we're not having to lug this water jug around, putting it on tables. But essentially we have this drawer slide here that we can slide out and it locks in place here. So then we can flip this up, fill up our water bottles, our water packs. We're ready for the hike, clean dishes, whatever we need to do. And then when we're all done with it, just put it back, slide it back in and it locks in place. So in a camper van, it's super essential to make sure that as you're driving, going around corners, going up mountains, things like that, that things aren't flying around or moving around, right? So having locking hinges on there was super helpful because this jug gets pretty heavy when it's completely full. If you kind of get down here, if you'll notice, we had utilized every little tiny space. So this is a small van. You need to utilize every space for storage. If you'll notice, we created this kind of area that you can put stuff, right? And no wasted space in this van. Wherever you need to put something, we got a place for it. So that's our water storage. The, the door is held by magnets. So again, not gonna open up or fly and hit the back door while you're driving. Uh, so I'm gonna hop up into here now. <clears throat> All right, so we added this kind of last minute, just a cute little shelf. So we got our main cabinet here, and this is where we ended up putting all of our food storage uh, and other things, cords and uh, charging cords and stuff like that that we needed to. It was best utilized to have baskets in here. So that's what we had when we were on our trip. We had some baskets that held everything together and in place. So it's not gonna slide around, fall over. 
And so this ended up being a lot of storage and we ended up filling that up pretty well. As a finishing touch here, added a little mirror. So again, held up by some magnets. So that's not going anywhere when you're going around a corner, nothing's flying out of there uh, as you're driving. All right, so next we're gonna talk about the bed bench unit. So this is multifunctional, multi-purpose. So one, it's a bench during the day when you have it all set up. Uh, at night, you can convert this into a bed, which I'll show you here in just a little bit but also serves as, as another purpose. It serves as, as a very large amount of storage. So we got this drawer that, that utilizes the space underneath the bed that can pull out here. And even the drawer is multifunctional. So we put in a, a surface here, so uh, you can put your, your camping stove on here and you can cook up your tacos and whatever you need to cook up here. But when you open up here, you have uh, three feet uh, by 12 inches of, of storage. So. This is where you can put all of your, all the things you need for cooking and camping. You can put gear in here, whatever you need to put in here. It's a huge drawer sitting on 250 pound drawer slides. So you're not worried about uh, that thing breaking or falling or anything like that. Um, so that's been, that was super handy. Just gives you, you don't have to bring anything away from the van. You can do everything all right here, but you're also not cooking in the van and creating uh, fire hazards and things like that. All right. so. In order to turn this bench into a bed, it's, it's fairly simple. So the, back, the backing on the bench is multifunctional as well. Underneath this pad, we have a piece of plywood Velcroed nicely to uh, there so it doesn't go anywhere or move when you drive. And then there's these little braces on the cabinet on the bed that you just slide that into, creates that. And then we move this cushion right over here. So the cushions are nice and snug in there. They're not moving around when you're, when you're sleeping, but this creates about a twin size bed, which is nice and, nice and cozy for two, probably nice and spacious for one. So that's, that's how that converts. Really simple, really functional, super cozy, um, and really nice. All right, so in the vein of not wasting an inch in this space, which is essential for, for camper van living, uh, back behind the bed here, we've made this on a hinge. So this pulls down. And we have additional storage back here. This is perfect for your camping chairs or you know, rain jackets, things that you're not gonna use all the time. And it even goes down, even further down here uh, and on the other side as well. So if you got trekking poles, things that are a little bit longer, they can kind of be stowed in here and out of the way. And then you can simply just close them away. Underneath the bed, right behind the driver's seat, that's where we're housing all of our electrical components. So this system is set up to be completely off-grid, meaning that you don't need to plug it in anywhere. It can run off, off the sun through the solar panel on the top. It also can be charged from the actual battery while you're driving, so from the starter battery of the vehicle. It's all 12 volt. We don't have any AC uh, going in our system for a couple different reasons. One is just the, the cost of those components. Two, we didn't feel like we needed it and we felt like we could, we could go with our electrical needs all on DC power. So part of camping is kind of getting away and uh, turning things off a little bit. So having that, the minimal uh, electricity usage is kind of part of that life for, for at least for us. Underneath the bed, here there's, there's two access points to, to my, the electrical closet here. One is right from above, and this is probably the easiest way to access it all. You can also access it from the outside, but we, this is our system set up here. Uh, we have a 100 amp hour uh, leisure battery from Renogy, and that was more than enough for our needs. We were just running some LED lights, uh, a refrigerator, and charging up our devices not a ton of electrical consumption there, and this was a, of the perfect size. So in here, this is our, our solar control charger. So this is connected to our solar panel up on top of the unit, and this just allows it to, to regulate the, the solar energy that comes in to give your battery what it needs at the, the correct voltages, depending on how full your battery is. And then right next to it is our other charging mechanism, which is our DC to DC charger. This is connected to the starting battery of the vehicle. It doesn't drain the starting battery. It only runs, based on how we have it wired up, it only runs when the vehicle is running, is on. So the alternator will charge the starting battery as well as charge up our, our in-house battery here. Between those two things, we never had any need for, for anything else. Super functional, it was, it was really awesome. Along with our electrical system, there's a few ways that we wanted to set this up. So there's a lot of different options for doing this. You'll find endless amounts of information on the internet. Some are great, 
some are not so great. I spent hours and hours and hours uh, looking into this and not saying I'm an expert by any means, but I think that I've set this up in a way that one makes sense, is very functional, but also isn't gonna blow the van up. So if we come down into here, you can see right over on this side, you can see we have a master cutoff switch. So if we're doing maintenance on the system or if we're just at some point we need to turn this system off, I can just flip that switch. None of the electrical components will be running. I can deal with all my fuses. I can rewire things if I need to or do maintenance on it as things come up. So I would always suggest doing that. The other thing I wanna point out, albeit it's a little bit messy in here, but every circuit is fused. So all of my uh, connections out to the, the chargers, to the lights, uh, to everything, even our solar and our DC to DC charger, everything has a fuse on it. So it protects the system from anything going wrong. And it's not gonna destroy the whole system or start a fire or anything like that, which I think is is a must when it comes to, to cameraman and actually living in the van. It just gives you that that sense of relief that you're, uh, that if something goes awry, you know, it's not gonna destroy the whole system. The other thing I wanted to point out is actually right over here on the side, uh, of this cabinet unit here. This is a, a battery monitor. So you can get your system set up and just uh, and just kind of wing it, right? But I would highly suggest getting a battery monitor if, if you have the funds for it. It uh, just allows you to really see everything. So as, as our components turn on, as the lights turn on, as our fridge turns on, that thing's gonna tell you, hey, what percentage do I have? This is how much time I have left to run my system as it is before the battery's dead. Also, when you're charging, it tells you that and how long it's gonna take to charge. So if you are you know, running low on battery and you, it's a cloudy day, you know, hey, I might have to drive around for, for an hour, run the car for 20 minutes to get that battery fully charged for the next kind of leg of the trip here. All right, so this thing is, a, it's equipped with four LED puck lights. So they're very, uh, power efficient. You can get them off Amazon. And we decided to go with, with a, a two-way switch in here for these LED lights. We knew there'd be times where we're, where we're getting in over there and we want to turn the lights off. So this is a very specific switch that you kind of got to dig a little bit for. So it's called a single pull double throw switch. So if you're looking for, for something on Amazon, uh, that's what you're looking for. This allows you to wire up the two-way switch. So we can turn on and off the lights from back here, but we can also do it on the other side of the cabinet on our rocker switch panel. It was really nice to have that um, instead of having to reach all the way in over here to flip the lights on or you know, vice versa on this side. So the other thing on the back here, this is a 12 volt, like just like a cigarette lighter plug. This came with the van. So this was already in there when we disassembled the whole thing. It was hanging there. I'm like, I don't really want to waste that. It feels like it could be useful for something. So this is kind of our emergency electricity. If something were to happen to our battery or, or we, we couldn't get it charging or anything like that, um, this is an option that we could run the car, plug in one of those little uh, inverters that you can buy for your for your car plug that in there and we could charge our phones charge whatever we needed to off that just kind of as a fail safe just in case uh, something happened so back here on, on the back of the bed unit we have this it's just kind of a shelf in here we have mounted usb chargers this is this takes USB 3.0, so it charges things really fast. Um, but it also, we, we made sure that this was wide enough that we could set our phones on it and a little lip here so that our phones didn't fall down into the door at night and then we are frantically looking for it. All right, so most vans will have, above the driver and passenger seats, they'll have this extra space, especially on the tall vans. They're, they're gonna have uh, just a lot of wasted space up there. Uh, so what you'll see in a lot of vans and what, what we did as well was to add an overhead storage bin up here. Um, we essentially uh, created an extra about 25 inches up here uh, of storage. And it's about, I would say about eight inches tall. Um, the opening's a little bit less than that, but we were able to put all our clothes, towels, things like that up here. Again, not wasting even an inch of space in here. Um, we also got these six inch gas strut hinges here. These were tricky to find. It was hard to find a, 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 like an, an, a cabinet hinge uh, for something that was this small. So we were able to find this one that was six inches. It works really well. It holds it up for you so you don't not having to hold it while you're reaching in. Um, but it also, as you're kind of bringing it up, has this fancy soft open, which was very satisfying to watch. So. That's our overhead storage. Up here we have our uh, curtain rod, just made from a dowel and some, some dowel holders with a little curtain here just to give us some privacy at night so people aren't looking in uh, and seeing us in the back. So one of the challenges with 
camping and living out on the road is if you have a cooler, right? You always have to stop to get ice. We immediately knew that, that we wanted to get something, a, a better solution for that because we were going to be pretty remote and we weren't sure when we were going to be able to stop and get ice. We get, decided to go with a, a car refrigerator. So this can also function as a, as a freezer, not both at the same time, but either or. In here in the bench, uh, a very convenient place to store it. This one is 22 quarts. Um, and it was more than enough to hold all of our stuff. Most of our, our food was in here. Uh, we pre-made food uh, for breakfast and, and dinners and things like that that we could keep stored in bags so we didn't have to, to house any really big things. Um, but it was, it was plenty of storage for, for all that we needed in here. Uh, it keeps it nice and cool. This little cabinet here, one thing I wanted to point out is over here on the side, we've, we've ventilated the box. This thing heats up when it's running, especially on a hot day, the compressor in here will heat up. So I made some holes up there so that at least it had some way to vent and not overheat so that it didn't fry the components and then we didn't have a fridge for the rest of the time. This is plugged in with, with 12 volt just into a cigarette lighter type of uh, socket that I installed right down into here. Um, it can also be plugged in via AC so you can plug it into a, an outlet if you wanted to as well. So, uh, and then we just close it up, tuck it away and it's out of sight, not taking up space. Uh, it's just using this multifunctional bench to, to store that. All right, so over here on this side, we wanted to make sure we still utilize this space. So again, here's our access to the electrical, just a little door so we can access it from here. Um, and then right here is a, a drawer as well that comes out 20 inches. This is where I kept all my tools. This was my garage here. Kept the drill and the toolbox and all of that stuff in here. Also just another place to, to store things. And then I have here, I wanted to make sure that, that as we were going, if, if I needed to run additional wires or any cables, I still had access to, to do so. All of my electrical runs underneath the floor and then it can come up through here and I can still access these cables. So a lot of times you'll see in a build where everything's just kind of shut in and screwed up. And, and if something happens, you got to disassemble something uh, in here where you're able to access and run wire. Uh, and kind of deal with any sort of maintenance that we need to. Also gives you about two and a half feet of, of storage if you have something skinny, trekking poles or something like that that you can put in there. All right, so up on top of the camper van, you can see we have a, a 100 watt solar panel here. This is also from Renogy. Most of our electrical components are from Renogy just to kind of keep it consistent. This is fastened to the top um, and then the cables are actually ran through here, this is uh, this box has a fancy name, but I just call it the wire intake box. It keeps it so that you can run your wires through the roof of the van and have it be all waterproof so you're not getting water into the van through those inlet holes and then it just runs down and into the electrical box. We put it over, mounted it just on this side. You can mount it wherever you want to. I liked mounting it on this side because it gives you space to put another panel next to it. If you ever wanted to upgrade the battery, add some additional components, we got room on the other side. Uh, to, to put in another panel if we need to. Right next to that, right behind that, we have our Max fan. It's got a built-in rain shield on it, which is awesome. Uh, it's got 10 speeds. Uh, and it also can do intake and exhaust, which is a, a, a key thing to, to look for if you're looking for a fan. So that's, that's mounted right up there as well. One of the things we knew we needed in here was, was insulation. And there's a lot of different options. Again, you can go out there from all the different prices and all the different functionalities and all the different installation techniques. We landed on one that's called Havelock Wool. So in our research, we stumbled across this because we're finding that some of the other insulation options, one, are, are a little bit challenging to, to deal with, have to wear masks and gloves and all that stuff. And that's just not something we wanted in our camper van that we were going to be enclosed in. So there might be some, some chemicals that it omits. Also some of the, the foam boards and things like that. Um, great for the floor where it's kind of a, a, a footprint there. Um, but on the walls, if, if you got gaps or anything like that, we just figured we wanted something that was more workable and also really clean. So we went with Havelock wool. It does a lot of different things. So one, it insulates very well. So if you shut all of the doors on this camper van and you're in here, the only place you hear things from is the fan on the ceiling. Otherwise, if, if if somebody's walking by or there's people at the campsite next to you having a good time, we could hardly hear anything in here. It also wicks moisture, which is uh, a must for a camper van. When you're enclosed in that space, just your breath alone can cause a lot of moisture in this space. And uh, you'll see some people put vapor barriers up and a lot, there's a lot of different options like I mentioned, um, but a lot of those trap that moisture inside and sometimes that moisture gets stuck underneath your ceiling, behind your cabinets and, and can be a, a place where mold and mildew can start to grow and then you're creating another toxic environment to live in, right? And then also the, 
the, the insulation properties were, were fantastic. My favorite part was how workable it was. If there was a gap or you, you made a mistake on, on something, you can rip the stuff apart like cotton balls uh, and just kind of stuff it in. So everywhere in the back side of this camper van, uh, anywhere physically possible that we could get it, we stuffed in uh, Havelock wool and it's really nice. Our kids could come and play with it. They didn't have to worry about uh, getting fiberglass in their hands or anything like that. So super safe, super clean. 100% recommend Havelock wool. Um, I'm not a salesperson for Havelock, but I really love this stuff, so I, I highly recommend it. Thank you, Scott and Sabina, for the tour of your amazing camper van. This van is for sale, so I'll put a link below to Scott's YouTube channel where you can inquire for more information, and he's got some great videos going into more detail on this build. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe for more small camper and camping content.